Okay, if you've been following along with our DC circuits series that we've been doing with Digilent, we have done three thus far. And the third video that we have done, the third lesson we've done has been on Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law, KCL and KVL. So in this, we are going to do a practical or a practicum where we basically are going to give you the opportunity to take a real circuit, look at it as a schematic, and then do the calculations. And we will not do the calculations here in the video. I'm going to leave that up to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce everything to you, show you the setup, get everything set up the way you should have it set up. And then I'm going to give you the opportunity to pause the video, go and actually solve this circuit, and then start the video again and see if you come up with the same results as we get when we actually measure this. So that's pretty exciting. And that's part of this practicum that we want to do in terms of both showing you how to do these measurements, but also give you the opportunity to do your own calculations and see if you come up with the same answer that we get. So that's pretty exciting. So let's jump into these circuits themselves. First, we have here the circuit diagram, which is the conceptual representation of the circuit. And then I have over here the actual real life circuit that represents this. So first, let's actually go and get a close look at our breadboard. And then we'll go over and have the comparison with this conceptual circuit diagram that we've put together. So here we have our circuit, we have three different resistors. And then we have here a power supply. So this is five volts. This is coming from our discovery three from Digilent. And then we also have over here a negative two volt supply. And this is coming from our negative power supply from our discovery three. And then we have down here our ground. Now we actually have this extra wire right here. That is our reference ground. So we are going to be taking some measurements later with this. And this basically makes sure that our measuring device, our discovery three measurement aspect, is at the same ground or reference level as the ground of our power supply. So that's all that this one is for. As you look at these three resistors, you will notice that this node is by itself, this node is directly connected to that power supply, and then this node is directly connected to ground, whereas these three are all connected together. So in this, we are going to try and figure out exactly what the current flow is through these three resistors, and more specifically, what the voltage is at this particular node. So now that we know what the circuit looks like in real life, I have created a diagram here that represents what it looks like conceptually. Of course, this is how we are going to do our calculations, and this is where we are going to work. So as you see, there's the five volt power supply that I referenced. There's also the negative two volt power supply, and that is shown by having the negative up here and the positive down here. You can either think of it as a negative power supply or just simply that it's inverted. And that's actually one of the fun things that as you get to understand electricity better, you'll see that all this voltage really is just referential. So you can take a plus five power supply and just turn it upside down and make it a negative one. But in our case, we have this hooked up to the discovery, uh, discovery three negative power supply. I also measured these resistors and their nominal values are one kilo ohms, 6.8 kilo ohms and 680 ohms respectively. And I actually set it up the way I did on that breadboard so that it looked as similar to this as possible. Oftentimes, the actual physical configuration will be very, very different from how it's looking in the circuit diagram itself. But I wanted to ease into this process a little bit. And frankly, I wanted to give you the opportunity to see that relationship between the two, between reality and the conceptual. Because I know for me, and I know for many other people, when I first started doing this, it took a little while to understand, oh, this node can actually be anywhere, or I can extend this node by having this wire go over there. And physically, it just looks very, very different from this. So I wanted you to give that to, wanted you to have that opportunity to see exactly what this will look like. Okay, so really, what I want to do now is I want to identify some of the nodes here, talk briefly about the approach you can take doing KCL and also KVL. And then I will hook up the power supply and show you how it can be done physically if you want to create this breadboard yourself or an equivalent with perhaps different resistance values. And then that's when we're going to let you pause the video before we reveal exactly what the measurement is and we find out what the voltage is at this node. Because once you know the voltage at this node, it's very easy to find the currents through those resistors. So when you're looking at this, I find it easy to just identify some of the nodes and I'll just call them A, B, and C. So you see here this node between the five volt power supply and the one kilo ohm resistor, we'll just call that A. This shared node between the three resistors, we'll just call that B. 
And then this node between the negative voltage power supply and the 6.8 kilo ohm resistor, we will call that C. And then you notice that we have ground down here. We can even put the symbol down or we can just assume that that's ground. And we will just call that D. Now you can also do some other ways of calling it. Um, if you want, you can call it one, two, three, whatever. And often when we refer to this, we would say V sub A for our voltage at point A, V sub B for our voltage at point B, V sub C, and then you wouldn't even say V sub D, you'd just say ground or zero in this case for your calculations. So if you wanted to use KCL, what would you do? You'd probably only want to be looking at node B because that's the only one that you don't know the voltage right now. You know right here that this is negative two volts, and you know right here that this is positive five volts in reference to our zero volts of ground right here. So you could look at this and make some assumptions. You could say, I think since this is a higher voltage, and this is probably a lower voltage, that our current flow is going to go this way. And then you could also think, well, assuming that this is ground and things tend to flow into ground, but not always, definitely not always, but they tend to flow into ground, we'll assume that our current is flowing this way. Now this one's a little bit trickier because this is a negative voltage right here. So is this B going to be higher than our negative voltage right here, or is it going to be lower? And you know, you can just take a guess and guess what? If you make a guess and make that assumption, and base your math around that, the math will tell you. If it turns into a negative current, that just means that it's going the opposite way of what you assumed. So in this case, I'm just going to assume that everything flows into B other than this one. So we can assume that current flows into B. Okay, and then that is how you can do KCL, is just figure out current going in, current going in, current going out, and set these two currents added together equal to this current going out. And that's it. So now let's jump in. KVL will be very similar in that you just assume a direction. Just say, all right, let's just say we're going in this direction. And then we can do the same thing here. Just assume that our rotation is right here. And one of the nice things about this is if you make this assumption, it makes it a little bit easier conceptually to understand that what you have going one direction through this resistor will be subtracted out going the other direction through this, through this resistor. So now, before I give you the opportunity to put these equations together and figure out for yourself what exactly these values are, let's jump into Waveforms, our piece of software here, and provide the power to this, and then we will see what the voltage is at V sub B. So now we can go over and we can first create our supply. So we have both our positive and our negative supply uh, on right now, even though the master enable is off. That positive supply is going to be five volts. And then that negative supply is going to be negative two volts. And then at this point, let's just really quick check our USB current and our USB voltage before we enable it. Okay, and we see that it jumped up just a tiny bit. Absolutely fine, just making sure that we're being safe. So we definitely want to make sure that our current is staying within reasonable limitations, though again, of course, the software will cut out if there are any issues. And of course, there's hardware issue, or excuse me, hardware protections in our USB to make sure that it's not producing too much current. But that usually just means that our circuit is set up correctly. We see that our positive is outputting about five volts and our negative is about negative two volts. So we are not going to turn it on yet, but we will open up the voltmeter. We can leave it at one second, and then when we need to, we'll hit run. So now this is the time. Pause the video. Go do your calculations here. And then once you're done, hit start and see if you can get the same voltage for V sub B as what we are about to measure. Okay, so here we are. Hopefully you figured it out, and let's verify your answer. I'm just going to go in here and hit run. And then I'm going to take my, what is it called again? Oops, I was looking at the wrong spot, the actual thing here. It's R1+, plus, which goes to our analog input one. So we should be seeing this showing up on the screen in just a moment. As I put this in to that node, we get 1.8 volts. Is that what you got? Hopefully it is. If not, check your mouth, see what happened, see exactly why that's the case. 
honestly, these are nominal resistances. The 1K, 6.8K, and the 680 ohms, the actual measured value is slightly different than that. So you'll notice that your answer is not exactly the 1.813 or 1.818 or whatever volts there. And that's because these resistors have nominal values is what I've written down here. And the actual measured values are slightly different, but it should be really, really close. And I wanted to use this as an example of that is again, what real life is like. You need to have that intuitive idea of, is this in the right ballpark? Is that variance due to something like the tolerances or is it something more fundamentally wrong? And it's really good to have that critical thought in looking at your answer and in looking at what you're measuring. So hopefully that's something where you're like, oh yeah, that was pretty close. That's exactly what I would have expected instead of, oh no, that's way off, what's wrong? So if you're almost exactly right, it should be the same, then you'll be totally fine. But that's all we have here for today. This has been our opportunity to use a KCL or KVL um, approach to actually solve a simple circuit that we have set up in real life and compare our solved answer to what we actually measured here. Hope you found this interesting and fascinating, and I hope that you're enjoying these more practical videos. We're enjoying making them. They're a little bit more of a challenge, but they are exciting as well. If you like this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you in the next one. Take care. Hey, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Did you know that circuitbread.com also has more useful engineering content? In addition to the tutorials, textbooks, tools, and other things, we have dozens of EE FAQs that explain quick, standalone concepts that are helpful for electrical engineers. Go check them out.